P, P plus 50, P plus 100 are all prime numbers. Find the largest value of P cube minus 2. P, P plus 50, P plus 100 are all prime numbers. Find the largest value of P cube minus 2. Nice stuff, right? So, let me do this. What, what we do usually? Let's put some P is prime. P equal to 2 won't work. 2 plus 50 is not prime. 2 plus 100 is not prime. I'm going to put P is 3. 3 plus 50 is 53. 3 plus 100 is 103. This is prime, this is prime, this is prime. Lovely. All three are prime. So P could be 3. Could be 3. In which case, P cube minus 2 would be 27 minus 2, which is 25. I'm not saying we've got the largest value, but we've got one value. P equal to 3 works. If P were 3, P cube minus 2 is 25. We've got ourselves one value. Nice. Now let's find another. Next prime number is 5. 5 won't work. 55 is not prime. Next prime number is 7. 57 is not prime. 5 plus 7 is 12. Next prime number is 11. 50 plus 11 is 61. 100 plus 11 is 111. This is not prime. E equal to 13. 13 plus 50 is 63, this is not prime. I want P, P plus 50, P plus 100 to be all prime. Let's put P equal to 17, 67, 117. This is prime, this is not prime. P equal to 19, 69, oh this is not prime. P equal to 23, 73, 123 is not prime. I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble. I thought I'll find one more, two more, three more, and we will to find the largest value. Now I'm already thinking maybe there are not too many values. Maybe, just maybe, there is no other value. And so p equal to 3 is the only possibility where all three are prime. Now I'm going to say maybe that is the case. Now I'm going to prove that. How do we prove that? Let me see a pattern. p equal to 5, p equal to 55, p equal to 105. This is not prime, this is not prime. 7, 57, 107, this is not prime. 11, 61, 111, this is not prime. 13, 63, 113, this is not prime. Why are these numbers not prime? 57 is 3 into 19. 111 is again 3 into something. 1 plus 1 plus 1. 63 is 3 into something. 117 is 3 into something. 69 is a multiple of 3. 123 is a multiple of 3. There's a multiple of 3 sitting here somewhere. And now I'm going to see if I can, if I can yes, extrapolate this. I'm going to reframe this question. P, P plus 50, P plus 100 of these three, somewhere there has to be a multiple of three sitting. That's my hypothesis. How do I prove this? How do I go about thinking about it? I'm going to draw the number line. I'm going to select some P here. I'm going to select P plus 50 here. I'm going to select P plus 100 here. You will learn modulo arithmetic and, and, and all kinds of fancy reminder theorem and all that. But I'm going to do it by a very old-fashioned method. Right? So from P plus 50, I keep on going in steps of 3. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. three. So P plus 47, P plus 44. Keep subtracting 3. Right? What will I finally hit here? Think about that. From P plus 100, I keep on going in steps of 3. From P plus 100, if I keep on going in steps of 3, I won't hit P plus 50. The difference is 50. 50 is not a multiple of 3. From P plus 50 to P, I won't hit P plus P. 50 is not a multiple of 3. P plus 50, from 50, if I keep subtracting 3, where can I go to? Multiples of 3, P plus 3 into 16 is 48. So if I keep on doing this, I can go till p plus 2. I'm doing the same thing this side from p plus 100. From p plus 100, I keep subtracting 3. 3 into 33 is 99. Here, I can go all the way till p plus 1. Lovely. Beautiful idea, super important idea. P, P plus 1, P plus 2. The three consecutive numbers. P 
p, p plus 1, p plus 2, three consecutive numbers. Now, if out of these three, one of them has to be a multiple of 3. In any 3 consecutive number, there is one multiple of 3. p, p plus 1, p plus 2. If p plus 1 were a multiple of 3, p plus 50 will be a multiple of 3. If p plus 2 were a multiple of 3, p plus 100 will be a multiple of 3. Yes or no? I am going in the other way around. Sorry. I have done this in a hurry. If p plus 1 were a multiple of 50, p plus 100 will be a multiple of 50. If p plus 2 were a multiple of 50, p plus 50 will be a multiple of 50. Or out of p, p plus 50, p plus 100, one of these has to be a multiple of 3, for sure. So, all three of them cannot be prime. But hey, we've been told all three of them are indeed prime. So, what is the possibility? One of the three has to be the prime number 3 itself. That's the only possibility. Or p equal to 3, it's the only scenario where this is possible. So if p were any number greater than 3, p, p plus 50, p plus 100, of these 3, one of them will be a multiple of 3. If it's a multiple of 3, it cannot be prime. So all 3 cannot be prime. We've been told all 3 are prime. Of these 3, one of these is a multiple of 3, but all 3 are prime. There's only one prime number that's a multiple of 3, 3 itself. Or one of these 3 has to be 3. These 2 cannot be 3. The first one has to be 3 or our number p has to be 3 which means p cube minus 2 has to be 25. That is not just the largest value, that is the only value possible. p equal to 3 is the only solution. Proving that, establishing that, that is the tricky part. If you know modular arithmetic, this is super useful, it becomes uh, more attemptable. Don't, don't, I'm not going to solve this using modular arithmetic and so that's not the objective. I, I know several of you don't know modular arithmetic but I want to think in terms of Going in steps of 3, p, p plus 1, p plus 2. p plus 1, if I keep on adding 3, I'll hit p plus 100. p plus 2, if I keep on adding 3, I'll hit p plus 50. So p, p plus 1, p plus 2 and p, p plus 50, p plus 100 are similar. One of those three has to be a multiple of 3. That's the takeaway. That's all we need. Right?